Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to yet another PoE video. Once more, we're gonna do a little bit of science. I have been running over the last couple of days 100 Kirak missions with the question, how bad is it? Well, it's pretty bad, but also this could be a very interesting video because I'm going to show you exactly what you can expect here. Here is the purpose. Tell you pretty much to not touch these Kirik missions unless which is in the conclusion. I'll give you a full breakdown of what each scouting report does exactly so you know what to expect if you do go this route or maybe if GGG changes something so that it's actually worth it. I'll give you a full breakdown of the loot that I got. Timestamps are in this video, presentation will be shared in the description and you can of course like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Alright, what we'll be talking about today, I'll start with a small introduction. I'll give you a quick overview of the Atlas Passive Points setup. I will give you a breakdown, and this is the meat of the video, a breakdown of reports and rewards. And finally, the conclusion. Introduction. The last video, I farmed around 100 Kirak missions and a whole bunch of scouting reports as well. I did a breakdown of what you can probably expect if you take the passive notes in the next slide. And in this video, I'm running all of these missions and I'm using all of the different scouting reports. All of the numbers are in the presentation and, you know, I know it's gonna be pretty bad, but still, I feel it is interesting information and should GGG make some changes, for example, that they allow us to actually use the Atlas passives on these reports, then at least you have some basic information as to what you can expect here. Here is the Atlas passive point setup. I'm not gonna go too much into this because this entire thing does not apply to any Kirik mission that you're running except probably these three minor nodes over here which give you 5% pack size inside of a Kirak mission. I have made some general observations which I would like to share with you after running 100 of these things. All of the red maps in the Kirak missions are tier 16 or you know in case that you haven't completed tier 16 yet it could also possibly be the highest tier that you have completed up until this point. All the maps have at least 20% quality on them and some have even 35% quality. Regular scouting reports still drop from Kirik missions but the special scouting reports such as the otherworldly scouting report for example that doesn't drop because that is part of the atlas passes and those don't apply. The leak mechanic is in there and probably if this uh, system continues to exist which it very likely will future league mechanics can also be found in here. The favored map system is working, a little bit to my surprise honestly because it's kind of a crapshoot if that thing works on a system or not, but in this case it definitely does. Map completion can grant more Kirak missions I think, because I got more than I started out with. So I think every now and then you kill the final boss and you get just another Kirak mission. And last but not least, not having the Atlas passive bonuses, Scarabs and Void Stones active on these missions feels pretty bad. Especially if you've just been running regular maps and have been juicing, which I've been doing for the last couple of weeks. And now you suddenly run these missions. Yeah, it's uh, quite empty all of these maps and there's not a whole lot to do in them. All right, we're gonna dive into the nine different scouting reports that are available. I missed one in my previous video because it was so rare, but I included it in this one. I may have missed another one, which is extremely rare, but I think I got them all. Starting with the Explorer's scouting reports, the most common scouting reports available. I ran 25 of these. It rolls maps that you have not yet completed, making this ideal for map completion because it is heavily biased towards rolling a map that you still need to do on your atlas. Also, it rolls quite some Shaper and Elder influenced maps, which aren't too bad. You can kill the Conquerors, or you can kill the Elder Slayers, or you can kill, you know, whatever boss is in there, get your Fragment, maybe run Shaper, Elder, that sort of thing. It is not too bad. And this is true for the Explorer missions, and it's true for pretty much any of the following Scouting Reports missions as well. I ran the missions with the most quantity or with decent objectives like Delirium, Harbinger or Guardian Maps, Elder Slayer and that kind of thing. Here you can see an overview of the loot. I ran 25 maps and then this is the loot that is pretty bad, right? This is the currency section. You could say I got one exalt, which is not too shabby, but you know, 
7k or some some you know regular currency i popped a few deliriums so i got 80 splinters out of that that's worth something some random uniques because some random unique maps are dropping for example this shield is from the lunaris and solaris temple that's a map called the twilight temple some divination cards but nothing special a whole bunch of maps and here you can already clearly see that i have cemetery favored right and uh, at least half of the maps that are dropping are cemetery maps proving to me that the map favoring system is at work here and just some other random loot but this is really nothing special talking about the Val scouting reports these are reports that roll a whole bunch of corrupted maps you would expect maybe because of that um, a lot of Val temples but i got just one of them and most of the loot that I got is actually from these Val Temples because they drop quite a few things. Rare Corrupted Blight maps appear as well, giving me also quite a bit of decent loot. But this is just RNG, you can roll Corrupted and regular Blighted maps from Explorers reports as well. So this is just RNG, it's nothing really special once again. Singular scouting reports, I ran 13 of these, they roll at least one unique map which you can see over here. From this moment in the presentation I have included screenshots of the outcomes of rolling the scouting reports. So here you can see what you can roughly expect. And if you look somewhat closely you could argue that these are the regular unique maps that you get. These are typically unique maps that you find quite a few of. Synthesis maps do appear, they are quite rare however. And otherwise you're not gonna see for example Doriani's Machinarium unless you get very very lucky or a beachhead. If you want to farm for those rare unique maps you need to keep watching because there are much better methods for this. And here we dive into the loot. These unique maps are absolute trash, to be honest. The regular ones, that is, they hardly drop anything that is valuable. I got a bunch of cards from the Putrid Cloister. I got some maps, of course. I got this from the Aziris Fault map. Some regular currency. This is once again the shield from the Twilight Temple. And what you see over here is from the Coward's Trail, I think. These are very high item level weapons that could be useful in crafting. Moving on to influenced scouting reports. These are the last regular scouting reports that you can just find without any investment on the Atlas Passive Trees. I ran six of these and these roll influenced maps as you can see over here. So we got some Guardian maps, some Elder Slayer maps, that kind of thing. These reports are pretty rare. They didn't drop at all to me in the previous video, which was uh, me farming 100 maps. These only work on red maps because they need to be tier 14 plus. Otherwise you can't roll these influenced maps because then the bosses simply don't spawn. And then we get into the special missions, the special scouting reports. There are five of these starting with operative scouting reports. I ran 14 of these and what these specifically do is according to their own description they say it rolls a valuable implicit and I have listed for you guys all of these valuable implicits. They are uh, better than not having them I would argue but because you have no atlas passives applicable these valuable implicits don't really synergize at all. For example, I have abysses in the area spawn 100% decreased monsters. If I would also have some atlas passive nodes that actually do something with these abyss monsters, for example, give them basic currency or better items or whatnot, this would actually be pretty good. Just on its own, it's really not worth much. Same is true for strong boxes because these are not guaranteed rare or corrupted. These are just regular strong boxes of any rarity. You got an, uh, an expedition one, you got a legion one, more maps, that's not too bad actually. More divination cards, that's also not too bad. And more uniques is I suppose also not too bad. The blight encounters gain up to an additional blight boss. The metamorph is an interesting one. It says metamorph bosses which drop an itemized item sample drop an additional itemized sample and what happens i was like what does this even mean right but i ran the map and what happens is that these itemized samples that means that they drop a sample that can give you a specific item a specific uh, type of loot i tried to assemble the final metamorph and then this was the screen that popped up 
you can literally choose 100% uh, rewards. So if GGG ever makes it in such a way that the Atlas passives and potentially Scarabs apply to Kirak missions, this is absolutely nuts, right? It's good to notice that these implicits are always accompanied by a mission, uh, a Kirak mission that actually makes sense. So for example, the Legion uh, thing is accompanied by a general and this also gives you the mission that you need to clear the Legion. Taking a look at the loot, it is not worth an awful lot because it is just so random. Nothing to write home about, these are not worth it. Next one, comprehensive scouting reports. I ran 9 missions of these. Now these roll 16 maps, which is a lot. And not only that, these things are truly amazing because they clearly favor few maps that you otherwise will have a hard time finding. In particular, Doriani's Machinarium. This one over here. Normally you have to go into Delve, kill a boss, and then I already killed four of these bosses in my solo self-found runs. And this guy just doesn't drop the map. If you however get the comprehensive scouting report, you see how many of these pop up over here. It is absolutely insane. And if you ever are in solo self found and you're looking for this last map to complete your atlas, this is by far the best way to go. The same is true for the beachhead. I have uh, rolled quite a few of these as well. These are these little maps, normally very hard to find. A very special map, they drop also very specific loot. Otherwise, it just drops a bit of like random stuff. You got some other random unique maps, you got some vile temples. And just, you know, your, your regular maps, honestly, sometimes they're influenced, sometimes they're blighted. It's, uh, it's a little bit of whatever. And for me personally, this was very good news because it allowed me to complete 117 maps in Soul Self Found because this was the only one I still needed. And it allowed me to complete the Vault Pass as well. So I am very happy with that. Looking at the loot, what I have been doing specifically is running a bunch of beachhead. This gives you these fragments and these are fragments to a specific unique. You need to find three different fragments and then combine them together in order to get a specific item. Meaning that you can complete one of the challenges. I would argue that these are worth it if you want to do one of these things. Otherwise, just by purely looking at the loot, it is once again nothing special. Up next, the otherworldly scouting report. I ran seven missions and what these do is they roll at least one breach stone. I found that the charged breach stone, they roll in the yellow map. So here you see the yellow map section and these are the charged breach stones. If you roll the red maps, you get an enriched breach stone. So these are the enriched. This is enriched. This is enriched as well. The best thing about these breach stones is that they give you a lot of experience for your character and they give you a lot of experience for your gems. But otherwise, there's really not too much special about them. Here you can see the loot. Once again, it is the typical breach stone loot that you would otherwise get as well. What is potentially interesting is that over here you see, for example, the specific uniques that some of these breach bosses are uh, dropping. You can use the blessings that they also drop to upgrade these items into a better version. Once again, for solo self hunt, that could be interesting and this could be worth it. But just looking at the loot and the value of this loot, it is probably not worth it. Then we go to blighted scouting reports. I ran five of these and these roll blighted maps, which you can easily see, right? These are these yellow maps full of blight monsters. This means that you get very consistent rewards. Blighted maps are also part of the challenges in 3.17, right? You need to complete 50 of these. And this is going to help you out a little bit if that is what you want. And if you know how to complete and do these maps, it is decent currency. Because this is what I got from running only 5 maps. You get a decent number of essences, some stacked decks, some regular cards, a bunch of oils, of course, a bunch of maps, uh, for some reason a whole bunch of scrolls which, you know, could be useful, I suppose, and a little bit of currency. All things considered, the Atlas passives here are really sorely missed because you can get so much better and more loot if you have the Atlas passives enabled here. 
Then the delirious scouting reports. Four missions is what I ran of these. What this does is that it adds layers of delirium to at least rare 20% quality maps. So here you see one of the examples that I got out of the mission. And here you see a typically rolled uh, Kirag mission roster. All of the maps have delirium on them and to up to varying degrees. The most I saw was 80% delirious, but I think you could be able to run 100 or find 100%. If you can run 100 or 80%, that is a little questionable, right? I tried 80%. It's pretty difficult, I can tell you that, but I managed to complete it. But holy hell, that is, that is still pretty tough. Once again, Atlas passive points are of course sorely missed. And uh, I did not want to pick up individual simulacrum charts because... I want to save my wrists, so I didn't do that. Giving me this as a loot schedule, you got some essences, you got a bit of fossils, got some uniques, a few maps only, a little bit of currency, some gems, a uh, another scouting report, and uh, simulacrum sprinters, of course. I only got 39 because I didn't pick up the individual ones. All right, let's draw a conclusion to this whole experiment over here. One of the main things that people already know is that unless GGG makes Atlas Passes and Voidstone and Scarabs work with the Kirik missions, it is overall not worth it. Unless, and I want to stress this because it is not universally bad, there are, I would say, definitely specific reasons as to why you want to be running these and why you even might want to invest temporarily some points in the Atlas Passive tree to get these special scouting reports. So, under what circumstances should you actually run these things? Well, if GGG changes the point mentioned above, meaning that the Atlas Passives and Voidstones and Scarabs are actually working, then this system is pretty broken because it is so deterministic. Or, you still need to complete your Atlas. Then this system is absolutely amazing because it rolls all the maps that you still need, a bunch of unique maps as well. So that is very, very useful. Or you want to target farm specific maps like Dorianis Machinarium or Beachhead, because once again, you find so many of them. Or you want to target farm harvest, which is a common outcome of these missions. Or finally, you want some easy access to conquerors, elder slayers or guardians, either for their loot or for their fragments. So you can run Shaper, Elder, Sirius, that kind of thing. But for everything else, I think I have proven with some data and loot outcomes and whatnot, that this really is not worth your time or the Atlas investment. And that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe. I'd truly appreciate it if you do that. Thanks for watching, making it to the end, and I'll see you soon. Love you all. Bye-bye.